Paul, talk about the legal implications of this, as is reported. Does this new information about a recording indicate something to you that would be of real interest to Jack Smith? Um, he apparently has taken testimony. Andrea, we can't know all of the evidence that Jack Smith has in his possession right now, but if this recording is a capturing of former President Trump's voice, admitting that he has in his possession a classified document at his country club, at his golf club, then it is probably among the best, most important, most weighty pieces of evidence that Jack Smith has. And why is that? Because intent, what it is the president knew, is going to be one of the most difficult aspects of any prosecution. Any prosecutor has to know how is it that we prove what somebody knew. Here, what the president is going to have to say and respond to is, these were my very words. A tape played before a jury is powerful evidence. It doesn't forget and it doesn't lie. And, Andrea, as we know, the president has a kind of buffet of facts which he has been choosing from in the past, multiple explanations or defenses for why it is he had these documents in his possession. Chief among them, he says he could simply think about declassifying the documents and they were declassified, or that he uh, had a standing order that be, they be declassified. If this tape is what the reports say, that he is admitting he has in his possession a classified document, it's going to be a key piece of evidence for the federal prosecutors. Now, Peter, your newspaper has confirmed this reporting also, as have we. And it centers around reporting also about the president being very put out, very angry about an article in The New Yorker written by Susan Glosser, your co-author of many books, and she is, of course, your wife. In this article, she wrote that in the months following the election, uh, Chief, Joint Chiefs Chairman Milley repeatedly argued against striking Iran and was concerned about Trump's state of mind and that he, quote, might set in motion full-scale conflict that was not justified and was taking steps to prevent that from happening, actually, with other members of the national security team. That's the, the background, the context. Talk to me about the significance of this that you see uh, regarding the investigation as you've been reporting it. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think what Paul just said is important. The, the issue is Trump's claim that he can declassify anything. And in fact, the recording, as I understand it, isn't just that he acknowledges on the tape that he has a classified document. It's that he then says, I, I would love to get it out there, but I can't because it's classified. If that's, in fact, the case, something like that, that would indicate that he understands that it has not, in fact, been declassified, that, in fact, his mental powers of telepathy have not, in fact, uh, created a different situation where the document could be released. It's also important to remember that there's no evidence whatsoever, by the way, that he ever actually did declassify anything. There's no order that anybody has found, no memo. There's nobody who's you know, who's come forward with a specific, uh, you know, testimony saying, yes, he declassified these particular documents at this particular time or had some sort of standing order to declassify. It's also important to remember, by the way, that even, by the way, unclassified documents still belong to the government under the Presidential Records Act, and you're not entitled to take them just because you may have just declassified them. That by itself does not give you uh, the right to, to take official presidential papers when you leave. There's a whole process for getting access to those if you want to have uh, access to them, for instance, for writing a memoir, as many presidents do. That's not what happened here. And one other quick point, and Paul, I just want you to weigh in as a lawyer, because it's my understanding that this being a defense document also meant that uh, if he showed it to anyone, and we don't know that to be the case, it could it could trigger the Espionage Act. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be classified, just being a defense document, because the Espionage Act was written and put into law before the classification system that President Truman subsequently put into law. Precisely correct, Andrea, that the Department of Justice will not have to prove that the document President Trump had in his hand is a classified document to show a violation of the Espionage Act. There would be other charges that may very well meet that definition if, in fact, this was a classified document and kept, by the way, as we've said many times, in an unsecured location. Holding classified documents at a golf country club is wholly inappropriate. And that is a violation of the law as well. So the prosecutors here will undoubtedly be looking at a whole host of possible federal violations. And Andrea, this prosecution team is, is a team with extraordinary resources. And while President Trump faces a state charge now, may face 
future state charges in the future. One thing that President Trump will have to contend to that is different from those state charges are the extraordinary resources that federal prosecutors have here with the federal grand jury and the reach that they have to capture all of this various evidence. Uh, Jonathan Lemire, let me bring you in, because as uh, Peter was alluding to, President Trump has consistently and recently claimed that the classified, that he could declassify documents, even through a thought process, his power as president and ex-president. And here's what he said so recently during the CNN town hall with Caitlin Collins just last month. Why did you take those documents with you when you left the White House? I had every right to under the Presidential Records Act. You have the Presidential Records Act. I was there and I took what I took and it gets declassified. When it comes to your documents, did you ever show those classified documents to anyone? Not really. I would have the right to. By the way, they were declassified what do you mean not really? after. Not, not that I can think of. Let me just tell you, I have the absolute right to do whatever I want with them. So, Jonathan, <laughs> respond to that because this, as reported at least, contradicts that, that he had knowledge that he didn't have that right or that power. First of all, an easy fact check here. Donald Trump has the Presidential Records Act wrong. Uh, Peter Baker has it correctly in terms of what he's allowed to have or not have. Also, he does seem to suggest, almost admit there in that uh, town hall, that he took the doc documents with him, and he doesn't rule out the fact that he may have showed it, uh, showed them to people. Also, let's recall an interview he gave with Sean Hannity, a very friendly uh, Trump uh, interviewer on Fox News not too long ago, where Hannity sort of said to him, like, well, you would never, you would never take documents out. Well, you shouldn't have. And Trump's like, well, sure, I could have. I'd have every right. So, I mean, he seems to be sort of confessing all along here that he has indeed done this because he can't admit any sort of mistake. And this is real legal jeopardy here. Setting aside the Espionage Act or not, we don't know if they'll go that route, but it's possible. At the very least, he clearly did not ha have a right to this government property, and he obstructed their return. And that's why so many analysts believe that that's where Jack Smith could end up, the special counsel, on obstruction. That's why this is so different than, say, the documents that turned up at Joe Biden's house or Mike Pence's house, because as soon as they were discovered, they were immediately returned to the government, which is the way this is supposed to go. And as a final note, this is another moment where Trump may be on the verge of being tripped up by his own words. We, of course, recall the Access Hollywood tape. Uh, he is on that, confessing to sexually assaulting women. And, of course, another outstanding legal matter, the case in Georgia, the phone call with Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, in which he talks about urging him to find the votes. So it may be Trump's own doing here, as we see him on the campaign trail in Iowa uh, just a few moments ago, uh, that could lead him to some real legal peril. Peter Baker, Jonathan Lemire, and Paul Charlton, thank you all so very much.